Today, we'll talk about the basic concepts of the theory of evolution. This lesson was made by Jackie Hyenall and Mariah Thrush as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science classroom. First, what is evolution? The picture here is a small hint, but take 30 seconds to come up with your own definition of evolution. Descent with modification is a quick, concise definition of evolution, but what does that mean? Another way to word it is that over a large period of time, organisms diversify from a common ancestor into many different species. This diversification is called speciation. Scientists use these tree-like drawings called phylogenetic trees to show how organisms have evolved. First, the base of the tree represents a common ancestor to all species. Above that, there are also more recent common ancestors. Here, there is a common ancestor to the bee and butterfly, but not to the beetle or flea. It's important to remember that this happens over a very long period of time. We're talking thousands of years at a minimum. There are a few things to keep in mind when reading a phylogenetic tree. The first big misconception to tackle is that this figure is a tree, not a ladder. In other words, the butterfly was the last species to split from the tree, but it doesn't mean butterflies are better than the three other species. It's also really important to recognize that the butterfly did not come from the flea. Instead, the flea and butterfly have evolved from a common, now extinct ancestor. The order of the branches doesn't matter either. As you see here, I can put the branch with the chimpanzees and bonobos in any order, so long as the chronology of the branch forks below don't change. This can be difficult to understand at first, so pause the video and discuss with your classmates and look closely at the difference between the two phylogenetic trees here. Another huge misconception is this depiction of how humans evolved. We did not come from gorillas or chimpanzees. We do, however, have a common ancestor. When a common ancestor splits into two or more separate species, this is considered a speciation event. In phylogenetic trees, a speciation event is represented by a split in the branches of a tree, called a node. These trees aren't just artistic creations. They're results of research in visual form. Currently, using genetic sequences to create phylogenetic trees is very common. In this picture, the small bands of color represent DNA base pairs. Before genetic work, and even still today, morphology is used to categorize organisms. Morphology is the anatomy and physical traits of an organism. Pause the video now and complete the exploration activity to make a phylogenetic tree of your own. There are some terms for patterns you noticed while making your own tree. Homologous structures, or homologies, are traits in different organisms that are similar because they are inherited from a common ancestor. In this picture, a homology of all tetrapods is four limbs. Analogies can make creating phylogenetic trees tricky. Analogous structures are traits that have separate evolutionary origins, but are superficially similar because they've experienced natural selection that shaped them. An example of this is a bat and a bird. Although they both have wings, they aren't closely related. Genetic work can help sort out the differences between analogous structures and homologous structures. Vestigial Structures are anatomical traits that no longer seem to have a purpose in the organism. An example of this are the reduced pelvic bones in the whale. Often these vestigial structures are organs, bones, or muscles that performed an important function in the past, 
but not in the current species. Vestigal structures are hints that the animals we see today evolved from now extinct ancestors that had different shapes and structures. It can be easy to see all the differences between species, but it's important to remember that there is natural variation present within a species. In other words, all individuals in a species aren't perfect clones. Small variations in genes can lead to some physical variation, like we see in these butterflies. They belong to the same species, but they do look different. We now understand how speciation fits into the theory of evolution, but how does evolution happen? There are mechanisms that bring about evolutionary change, and we're going to talk about four of the mechanisms. Mutation, genetic drift, migration, and natural selection. Mutations are changes in the DNA of an organism that causes a change in anatomy, behavior, or a combination of traits. In this example, the gold-colored beetle has a mutation to its color genes. Genetic drift are the random changes from generation to generation. That means that there aren't any selective pressures. The person accidentally stepping on some beetles changes the color proportions of the population by chance. You've probably heard of migration. Migration is when individuals from one population migrate to another population. If the migrated individual mates with the new population and produces viable offspring, then the genetic diversity of the population would change and potentially lead to the evolution of a new species. Natural selection is one of the most talked about mechanisms of evolution. When a trait gives an individual a particular advantage to survive, then that individual can reproduce and pass that trait on to offspring. The big distinction here is that the trait must be heritable. In this example, green beetles are easier for birds to find and eat. Therefore, these gold or brown beetles have better survival rates and can produce more offspring. As I said before, a trait that gives a species a survival advantage must be heritable to be considered as a natural selection mechanism. An inherited trait that gives an advantage or improved function to an individual is called an adaptation. If the adaptation is especially useful to survival of an organism, then the individual survive longer and therefore reproduce and pass the adaptation on to offspring. Let's add another vocabulary word, fitness. Fitness is the ability to survive, find a mate, and produce offspring. The parents pass their genes on to their offspring, therefore also passing on the advantageous trait. When we think of the fittest individual, we usually think of the strongest or fastest individual. But for this definition, the fittest individual is the one that produces the most offspring. Artificial selection happens often in our society. It's when humans select and breed for desired traits in an organism, which can create a new species or subspecies. In this example, wild mustard has been artificially selected and has evolved into five different species that humans consume. What other organisms have gone through artificial selection? Pause the video and brainstorm with your classmates to make a list of artificially selected species. Domestic animals, including pets and livestock, as well as cultivated crops such as corn and soybeans have been artificially selected by society. The study of the theory of evolution has given us so much insight into how life first began and how life continues to evolve.